Hi, Euro. As you are looking at pages 13 through 22 about the Russian Revolution, what do I want on your mind as you're looking at it? Peace, land, and bread. Are those promises being fulfilled? So here, this is page 13. What did Lenin promise Russians that the communists would deliver? Peace from World War I. Land to be given to the peasants and the workers. Bread to solve the problem of hunger or starvation. Okay, take a look at page 14. What promise does Lenin keep with the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk and what promise does he break? Okay, the promise he keeps is, uh, he. this is peace with Germany. They're exiting the war. So peace, it's an end to World War I. However, what promise does it break? This, the best agricultural land as well as industrial areas. And sorry, the shading is really bad. And so let me describe this. If you just make like marks in here, um, Brest Litovsk, all this, the best agricultural land, this is all going to Germany. The industrial areas, those are being given away to Germany. And so land is, and the best land for agriculture and for industry is given to Germany. So how would you evaluate Lenin's promise of peace, land, and bread for the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk? Yes, you get peace, but it comes at a price of good land. And if it's the best agricultural land, what do you get on that land? That's where the bread is. So they're losing land and bread by gaining peace. So you keep looking at this. How did the Bolshevik decrees support Lenin's promises? Bolshevik, remember Russian communists, decrees, these are laws, okay? So land belonging to Tsar, church and nobles, handed to peasants. That seems good, land. Russia asked for peace with Germany, peace. So next to this land, I'd say that's a, is it a success? Yes, peace. Is that a success or not a success? That's definitely a success there. Working day limited to eight hours, 48 weeks, rules made about overtime and holidays. This gives uh, rights to workers. Rights to workers. I guess that creates more peace, right? Um, because workers are getting uh, more rights. Workers, workers insured against illness or accident. More rights to workers. Again, rights to workers is giving peace. Not as many strikes. Remember all those strikes we saw before? Not as many strikes anymore. All right, here, all non-Bolshevik newspapers banned. This is censorship. Does that give peace? This, I think, is an example of uh, it's not peaceful. And it is controlling. And here, other political parties are banned. Leaders arrested. Mm, that's not peaceful either. So not successful for peace. Not successful for peace. And then a secret police is set up to deal with spies. That's not peaceful either. Factories put under control of workers committees. Banks put under Bolshevik government control. Marriages can take place without a priest if desired. Divorce made easier. Um, this is good especially for women. This is peace for women. And so this is sort of a mixed bag of these Bolshevik decrees in 1917. And again, 1917, this is during historic context, during World War I. And it's when uh, Russia dropped out of the war. It's also when the USA came into the war. All right. Um... I'd like you to see what's the next one. Uh, that's it. Um, okay. So uh, hopefully this helps. Hopefully this helps and gives you some of the evidence that you can use to argue whether Lenin met his goals. Look at the other pages and you can see um, uh, similarly – Look for peace, land, and bread. This is the what I'd like you to do as you look through this packet. All right, thanks so much, guys. Bye.